for uh, Elegant Middlesex, London. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and it's a pleasure to have you in the chair as I speak today. A local journalist from my riding always asks me, so what did you like and what you didn't like? So I'm going to start off with a few positive notes of things that I did see in the budget that I do support. I am pleased to see the increase in GIS for single-income seniors. I have seen over my years many seniors that do find it difficult, so any time that we can help a single senior, I do feel that's very important. I am pleased with the continuation in funding for the broadband internet known as Connecting Canadians, a great program that was introduced by the former government. Here, here. And as the MP from Elga Middlesex London, I'm happy to see $3.1 million being invested to address phosphorus levels in Lake Erie. This will be something that's very important, especially since we have 80 kilometers of Lake Erie along my riding. But today I stand as the official opposition critic for families, children, and social development, and would really like to focus on Budget 2016 and the changes to the family benefits and their effects on Canadian families. But before doing so, and because I wouldn't want to do this to you, I would have liked to bring in my beautiful pencil that my husband had bought me so that I could do all these calculations, uh, brand new pencil and eraser, so I could complete and review and compare the new Canada Child Benefit to the previous government's family tax cuts. Let's look at the facts. This government has said that they will assist more middle-class families than the current plan. The biggest issue is the numbers just don't add up. When reviewing the average family income, these numbers provided by most recent uh, stats can report. It shows that when I do these calculations, six out of nine families that are of average income for families benefit from the current plan put forward by the Conservative government. This is better than this new plan that is now being offered. So when we look at a simple tax return, it is truly clear that the headlines from this government mislead Canadian families. I'm going to give you a simple scenario. John and Mary have two children. Their son, Jack, participates at programs at a local recreation centre and plays on the house league soccer team. His sister, Grace, age four, loves to dance and swims and participates twice a week in programs. Both Jack and Grace play the piano, and take lessons once a week. Mary works as a mechanic, and John as a school bus driver. To me, those are very middle-class incomes, very middle-class values. So with my new mechanical pencil, the federal tax form and the family tax cut forms, and using the previous tax rates, I calculated the following. The federal income tax forms for both John and Mary based on the 15% and 22% respectfully. I use the child tax benefit credits for both Jack and Grace, as well as the arts tax credits. And finally, I use the income splitting for families that incre increases the tax credits up to $2, an additional $2,000. Now, to make things simple, because I didn't want to get into a whole bunch of things, I didn't use the CPP, I did not use the EI contributions, and I did not use the employment credits that are given, because both governments agree that these are things that are on a federal, a T or federal tax return. And the bottom line, the middle class family has more money in their pocket through the Conservative government's family tax cuts. And because my new pencil had lots of lead, I completed over 80 tax returns using the Liberal middle class tax cut with the new Canada Child Benefit and compared the scenarios. Now, as I stated, when looking at the average income for Canadians, families, six out of nine families did better under the Conservative plan. And with this budget, there's also the removal of the tax book and education credits. And that is before families start paying directly out of their pocket for the national carbon tax and the carbon tax being introduced by different provinces throughout this country. Yeah. And these are same, the fa same families the that I speak of that include the same small business owners and the people who run our family farms. Employers will be paying more taxes in the future. The current government has cancelled the small business tax rate. They will be introducing increased contributions by both employers and employees into public pension plans after consultations. But they've also cancelled contributions by an in, or, but meanwhile, they've cancelled contributions into people's own personal tax-free savings account in December. And they have cancelled the hiring tax credits. These are tax increases to small businesses. And I would be remiss if I did not talk about legal, local agricultural producers and farms. 98% of our farms are owned by families. The Minister of Finance, during his speech, encouraged farmers to produce energy if commodity prices had dropped. Although I appreciate, appreciate that some communities uh, may feel that this is a great option, I live in Elga Middlesex, London, where this has become a big issue, especially at the provincial level. 
Well, coming from an agricultural community, I've had the opportunity to speak to our grains and oilseed farmers, our beef, hogs, tobacco, beans, lentils, <coughs> apples, strawberries, and pumpkin producers, and many op other options as uh, farmers have really diversified. They have clearly stated to me that they need new markets and support for their industry. As the industry moves forward, we must support science-based research, but not only in Ottawa centres, but in the fields and with the agricultural producers and agribusinesses. Yes, over the next six years, we will see a $30 million investment into agricultural research in Ottawa. But that is just a start, I guess, and I hope that's just a start. We need to do more for our farmers. And finally, for all Canadian families, agricultural and small business owners, we have a huge deficit that has, has been tabled. It is be, will be these families and small businesses that will be footing the bill. I think for many Canadians, it is truly hard to fathom 10 billion, 20 billion, and 30 billion dollars. For most Canadians, we understand our own household debts. This government is treating Canadian tax dollars like monopoly money. Sure, I like to play the game of life. My son always makes me play it, but this isn't a game. This is real money, and we need to see as a vision, not just spending. A, a lot of time when we speak in Parliament, we are using figures and formulas and numbers that just are not in touch with Canadians. I believe there is a time for governments to participate in stimulus programs to grow the economy, like we saw with the stimulus spending programs of the previous government. We got shovels in the ground, building new roads, bridges, recreation centres, and much more. And as well as an incredible investment in programs like the KIPP, the Knowledge Infrastructure Program, we saw universities like Western in, in my close city of London, Ontario, where we saw them improve the facilities for the Ivy School of Business. This was great infrastructure spending at a time when it was needed most. At that time, across Canada, and especially in my riding, where over 6,500 jobs are lost just in the city of St. Thomas, there were investments that truly stimulated the economy and got people back to work. But it's really the time, but, uh, but this is really not the time. We need viable options and viable, spend, or viable opportunities to get people back to work. But back to the spending. We need to spend wisely. And as I said, I do see some positive things in the budget. But this government is misleading Canadians, for, first and foremost. Important programs like tax incentives, like the fit, uh, tax free, um, fitness tax credit, does not just help family by giving them tax breaks, but it also helps promote physical fitness. Although sports not, might not be everybody's cup of tea, the ability to compete and improve oneself is hard to challenge. My children have participated in sports from swimming uh, and getting their bronze cross to playing in house league soccer teams. Sports and physical fitness improves oneself physically and mentally. Why would we be cancelling programs that encourage participation? Truly, if anything, I would have loved to see increases to these credits, especially for our seniors. These, in, in, when we look at these things, as they call boutique credits, is what the, the Liberal government likes to call it, this would be a great opportunity to help some of our seniors out who are worried about their physical fitness, being having memberships to the gym or, or participating in things. And at the end of the day, we may be taking money from, well, let's say, these tax credits and actually being able to help our health care system because there will be less people needing to use it as soon as possible. The art credit is another excellent example. Music and art programs are all forms built on creativity and linked to learning. This government likes to use the word boutique tax credits, as I said, and when discussing these credits, um, we need to see how these credits improve oneself, not only the oneself and the money in their pockets, but what it does to those communities when people actually get involved in their communities, whether it's the local recreation or the sports teams. These are small businesses sometimes as well that are also benefiting from it. So it's not only those organizations benefiting, but it's the families benefiting as well. These are great programs and initiatives that help our community members participate. And yes, I do believe it is important to support all families. This government's approach is not exactly what I would like to hope for, but does help some families. And I will say that, yes, there are some families that are helped out. As I said, only six out of nine times is it under the Conservative, three out of nine times for the Liberal government. I do support helping single parents. I do support helping families with disabled children. But this budget is very misleading. I would suggest a universal approach with the universal childcare benefits, fitness tax credits, and arts credits, and income splitting. I think those are the best approach. And I am truly concerned about the debt 
that seems to be helping the families today, but in the long run will be what they have to deal with tomorrow. These debts we're spending, spending, spending today, but what happens when we get the bill for all of the spending that we're currently doing? We need to look at these deficits. Mr. Speaker, I thank you for your time, and I look forward to the discussion in the House. Questions and comments on the member for St. John Rossi. Speaker, and thank you, Member Opposite, for her speech. Mr. Speaker, John, Mary, Jack, and Grace came into my constituency office last week. And John, Mary, Jack, and Grace are living in poverty, Mr. Speaker. In fact, they're having trouble making ends meet, Mr. Speaker. They're on a wait list for affordable housing. They're on a lineup for the food bank, Mr. Speaker. And what John, Mary, Jack, and Grace want, Mr. Speaker, is they want a budget like we delivered last month. They want a budget, Mr. Speaker, that has progressive ideas. They said to me, Mr. Speaker, after 10 years of cutbacks and regressive policies, they need a change. So, Mr. Speaker, they're very pleased about the Canada Child Benefit, which is better for 9 out of 10 families, that is going to lift thousands of people in my province, in my riding, out of poverty. They asked me about the tax-free savings account, Mr. Speaker. They asked me, why would the Conservative government double a tax-free savings account that only 4% of Canadians maximize? John, Mary, Jack and Grace asked me that. But I will say that John, Mary, Jack and Grace were thrilled with our budget. They were thrilled with the progressive nature of it. And my question to the member opposite is, will she not concede that the Canada Child Benefit is a transformational program, a government program that is going to be good for the many, not the few, as the UCCB. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ever met if she came to, came to visit the member from across. But as I said, we've got to look at everything here. We're talking about, a, as you indicated, a full transformation of this. With this budget, we have removed great programs like the fitness tax credit. We have removed the arts credit. We have removed the income splitting. Yes, I believe that we must continue to invest in affordable housing because not all Canadians are are getting there, are moving forward. So that's why we need to have excellent job creating opportunities so that we can get parents back to work, so that our youth, when they're looking for their first part-time job, have a job, so that we have an economy for these. It is important to have things when we need to give a hand up, but we don't always need to give a hand out. And I think what we need to do is we need to focus on job creation. We need to focus on these things. And we talk, when we talk about that fitness tax credit, let's just look at it very simple. Jack and Grace are probably getting those lessons from your 16 or 17 year old son or daughter. Those are the great things because those people, those are the people that are out there volunteering and making our community a better place and giving her people job. their first time jobs. So let's not forget about those Good important job. things as well. Good job. Question and commentary on the deputy de Sherbrooke. Merci, Monsieur le Président, et je remercie ma collègue pour, uh, pour son discours. Et puis, considérant qu'elle vient d'une région uh, de manufacturière, uh, je me demandais uh, qu'est-ce qu'elle pensait des commentaires du premier ministre qui, uh, pendant, un petit peu avant la campagne, avait, uh, avait rejeté du revers de la main l'industrie manufacturière et semblait pas y accorder beaucoup d'importance. Il avait même, uh, même dit uh, uh, que c'était pas une industrie qui, uh, qui était une industrie de l'avenir. Donc, j'aimerais qu'elle qu nous parle un peu de, de son de industrie uh, dans, dans son coin son coin de pays, puis euh, qu'est-ce qu'on peut faire pour les aider, euh, considérant que ce gouvernement-là euh, euh, les rejette. Honorable member for Elgin, Middlesex, London. Well, I really thank your question, or thank you for your question, and truly, that is something that's absolutely on my radar. We need to make sure that we have manufacturing incentives. Uh, we need to make sure that we're investing in new technologies. We need to make sure that there are going to be jobs for our Canadians. And so, I 100% agree with you. It is very important when our own, when the the leader of the party at that time went forward and was campaigning and said in my own communities that southwestern Ontario, you know, we should stop manufacturing and move into it and diversify. I will tell you that the majority of people in Elgin, Middlesex, London stepped back and choked themselves. That is not what grows our economy. Manufacturing, I come from agriculture and manufacturing, it is extremely important that we continue to invest in those things. And I will continue to support the manufacturing in my community. We have lots of automotive uh, in our community. We have lots of different things that are always occurring. And so anytime we can help manufacturing, we're helping families and we're helping Canadian economy. Good job. 
We have uh, time for one more short question and short response. The Honourable Member for Red Deer Lacombe. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I finally get to ask the question of an honourable member in this House. Um, so, uh, Mr. Speaker, my, uh, my question is going to be this. Uh, I remember what got me motivated to uh, get into politics. Uh, I remember my wife and I making decisions uh, for our family. We had one person stay at home to raise our children. We thought that's what was best. And I remember the policies of the day of uh, uh, former uh, Chrétien and Martin governments were absolutely disastrous here, for my here. family. I was absolutely thrilled in the last 10 years as a member of parliament on the governing side to bring forward many great policies that help families yeah, okay. in my constituency who are all telling me now that they oppose what the Liberal government is, is doing to them, getting rid of all of these benefits that help them. And I wonder if the honourable member here can reiterate just how positive the environment was for families under Steve, under former Prime Minister, uh, and how, how how terrible they are now here, under here. the current Prime Minister. Good question. Well, Member for Middlesex, London. It's interesting you ask this question, just because just the other day I was talking to my sister about the income splitting. Unfortunately, her husband has uh, has suffered a severe concussion and has been off work for the last two years. So therefore, he does not have the income that he used to. But because of this and the income splitting opportunities, they will be able to put more monies in their pocket. And what's great about that is they have two kids currently in university. Those things like the textbook credits and all of those important things will help out my sister Ann and Scott as they're going through this journey in difficult times. So I really thank you for that question.